Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hello, Joanne and Anne. Nice to see you girls. This is the Wexford Stamper, and it is my Tuesday evening Facebook Live. I'm happy that everybody can join me, and as you come on in, make sure you give me a shout out. Hi, Jean. Oh, wow. There you go. You're multitasking tonight, huh? And as you come out, give me a shout out and it would be great to hear from you guys. I'm excited about our new projects for this evening. A little bit of a spring little treat box. All right, let's go ahead and get started tonight. These are the treat boxes that I made. Now I'm going to be making specifically the little bumblebee box tonight, but on my PDF that will be included on my blog that you can download, I give you all the information for both of the boxes, the different types of papers and the DSPs that I use. So um, I won't be making both, but I'll talk a little bit about both this evening, but all the information will be on my blog. All right, so let's see already told you about this and let me give you my blog post here. My blog address is www.thewexfordstamper.blogspot.com. So jump on over there shortly after the live stream this evening and all the information will be there as well as the PDF. Thank you, Jean. It was so fun to make. So all right, let's talk a little bit about what was my inspiration to make these cute little boxes. And I have to say that when I was at Target, I found these cute little lint bugs and bees candy. I know that makes the bee, doesn't it? The little vellum. And these are milk chocolate with hazelnut and crisp filling. And they look like this. Are these not the cutest things you've ever seen? And we've got the ladybugs, which made me think, you know, of the ladybug, hello ladybug bundle right away. But then I thought about the bee and I said, hmm, I'm going to make this work. So I figured out a cute way to make a bee and I'm going to share that with you this evening. So these I found at Target. I think they're pretty easy to find this time of year. Um in any of the grocery stores. So um, these are those, aren't they so cute? They also have little bunnies and chicks. You need to go out and see the lint is knocking it out of the park for Easter this year. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Remember, we're going to do mostly um, the little bee box. All right, so. Let's talk a little bit quickly about the materials that I used. And this is the amazing bundle that I'm going to be using this evening. It is called the Hello Ladybug Bundle. And I love a bundle like this because it comes with a punch. And a punch is really quick. And I love making these because you can really put them together pretty quickly with that punch. Don't even have to get out those dies and your machine. <laughs> I know. Well, I had to do that. It's so funny, Jean. I thought of that like laying in bed after I made the project one day and I'm, oh, I'm going to add that tomorrow. That's how my mind works. So uh, lucky you're not around me all the time. So, all right. So let's go ahead and come on back. And we're going to start with a piece of cardstock. And amazingly enough, the color of this cardstock is bumblebee. Is that not perfect? And this is cut at five and a half by seven. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the scoring board. Hope everybody's enjoying this great weather we've been having. All right, so let's go ahead. Oops, that's extra something there. Okay, on the long side, let's see. It is, yep. You can be creative with punches. Wait till you see for next week, you're gonna be able to make something else with this punch. 
All right, let's look at the long side here. I'm going to score at one half. Remember all these dimensions and scoring dimensions will all be available on my downloadable PDF. Then we go to three, three and a quarter, and then not three and a quarter, three and three quarters, and then six and a quarter. Let me say those again. One half, three, three and three quarters, six and one quarter. All right, now we're gonna turn it on the short side here, and we're going to score at three quarters, three and one quarter, and four. All right, those are all our scores for this little box. All right, I'm gonna grab my bone folder and I'm going to go ahead and fold and crease all these score lines. This is a real cute little box. You could use it for other things. Other little candies would work as well. Jelly beans certainly would work in here. So it's a box you can use for a lot of different things. I like the design because it has a, the flap over, but then it has the belly band to hold it closed. So I've always liked that kind of box. All right, so here we go. We've got it all folded and creased. Now I'm gonna grab my template here. This one shows you exactly how our, your piece of cardstock should look after you finish your cutting. All right, so I'm just gonna lay that here. Okay, so I wanna hold my paper so that the skinniest little rectangle is down the left-hand side. This is the half inch, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and grab my scissors and we're gonna go across the bottom here where the smaller little squares are. And this first one here, we're gonna cut that completely off. Okay, and then I did a little bit of an angle there on that cut. Then I'm going to cut up this. This is going to help us on the bottom. This is the bottom flap. And these are the two bottom panels that fold on top of each other. So we're working on the bottom of our box first. All right, and then this is the other flap. All right, so there we go. There's the bottom all finished right there. <laughs> I don't know, they have to be small socks. They certainly wouldn't fit me, Renee, that's for sure. Maybe somebody's socks. All right, now let's look up at the top portion here. Let's turn it upside down from where it was before. And we're gonna start on the right side this time because we moved that little skinny portion the half inch portion over to this side. We're gonna cut through the first horizontal score line to the second and then cut a little bit of a wedge out. This is gonna be the section that we're gonna add the glue and put the box together. All right, let's leave that for now. Now let's go up these other vertical score lines. We're gonna go through one horizontal to the second here. We went, only went to the first down at the bottom, but these we go through to the second and we're kind of freeing up these little flaps. These are the flaps that are going to go right into the center, I'm not the center, the inside of the box under the big flap. Okay, and then here is the other little flap. So they're kind of do the same thing that the flop the flaps at the bottom do, but these don't get glued. They open and close. All right, now, you wanna look at the paper with your left, this little skinny section again, back on the right side, okay? We have two flaps now. We can't have two, we're gonna have to cut one off. So you wanna cut the one off that's farthest away from your skinny flap. So I'm gonna just fold down the tab and cut all the way across and that's gonna come off. Let me scoop this away. And there you have it, there is your box. Okay, pretty simple. 
And here is a red one for your ladybug box. Okay, very good. All right, I'm gonna grab my corner rounder before I forget. And I'm going to round the corners of the flap that comes over. Okay, see, this is gonna close this way and then that flap's gonna come over in front. So I, I always like to finish that off with the corner rounder. All right, now let's grab our designer series paper that we're going to use for this. Now the paper I found for this was from the Sweet Symmetry DSP um, pack. And I loved it because it was the exact same color. It was a bumblebee print and it just has little flowers on it. So I thought it would work. Bumblebees like flowers, right? So those two pieces are cut at, let me check my, my information here, two and three eighths by two and three eighths. And then we have a smaller one here that is going to be on the flap. And that is cut at two and three eighths by one and three eighths. And then I'm going to have to round the two, there we go, bottom corners of the paper, okay? Because that is going to go on the flap on top of the cardstock. Let's see, I'm gonna cut that off a little bit. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab our glue. I like to put on my pieces of cardstock before I put the box together, if it's doable, and it is in this case, gives you a little bit better ability to kind of really push down and get that all perfectly in the spot that you want. And you can push down a little harder on it because if you do that to a box, once it's together, you can like squash the box. Don't ask me how I know that, I just do. All right, so there is that. And now our final piece is gonna go right here on the flap. Okay, and you'll wanna watch your orientation with your paper, because this orientation is gonna look upside down from the other piece, but it's gonna be on the front side of the box. So it looks like I'm putting it on upside down, but it won't once we put the box together. All right, there are our three pieces ready to go. Now we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on this little half inch strip here along the edge. Then we're gonna turn it over just like this, fold it and then just fold the other side into that. And does a great job folding right where, glue, sticking right where it needs to stick so you have a nice square box. Okay, now let's turn it upside down. This is the front panel on the box, so that one's gonna go down last. So I'm gonna put down the two tiny ones. Then I'm gonna put the back one down and then this one goes down last. Okay, and the reason we do that is because you'll have the nice fold in the front of the box. And it's really kind of a picky little detail, but just makes it look a little more professional looking. Okay. All right, I think he's ready for his little chocolates. And I think you can fit three in here, but here are the cute little bees. I'm gonna have them fly right into the box. Gonna close the box. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and put the box aside and we're gonna get working on our little embellishment for the front. Now for that, I'm gonna use a two inch circle and it's coordinating this, the circle's in basic white and the coordinating scallop is in basic black. And let's go ahead and do our stamping first. I'm gonna stamp the little My Friend and that comes right from this set. And I'm gonna put it over to the right hand side, just like that. 
so we have plenty of space to put our little bug. All right, now let's bring in our punch. Okay, now we're going to punch two B bodies. That sounds weird, but all right, we're going to punch two B bodies, one in the bumblebee and one in the basic black. And the reason we have to do that is because we have to give them some stripes. All right, so there is our two B bodies. Okay, now what you're going to do is, first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut off the bumblebee colored body, cut off the head. Okay, then I'm going to grab my trimmer. Whoops. And we're going to bring him in. And let's see, I want to make sure I'm cutting at the right spot. That's where I cut the head off. <clears throat> We're going to place him in here and cut every quarter inch and kind of like we're slicing the cardstock into little strips. Okay, well, let, let me move this one. I got the gray one down here. We'll put him at the top. He's only for scoring. Can you everybody see? All right, so I'm going to cut. Move that over. See how I cut off the first quarter inch there? Now I'm gonna bring it over another quarter inch, put it down, cut again. There. And one more time here. Come on, my finger has glue on it, there we go. Okay, and then his bum I have is a little more than a quarter inch stripe because he's got a big butt, I guess. Has to be big to hold that giant stinger. All right, so that's what I did. I took that B body and I just cut it every quarter inch. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take his pieces and we know this is his butt. So let's go ahead and we'll put that piece on first. And that goes right at the bottom. Okay, now the next piece is this one. And we really don't want that one because, oh, it goes this way. I have it going the wrong way. Here we go. This is the second piece and I cut that one off. So we're gonna not use that one. We're going to skip it. Here, let me try again. Here, there. That is the second portion. We don't wanna glue that one on. We're gonna leave that one off because we wanna have that place, the black come shining through there. So we're gonna take the third strip and we're gonna put that on next that would go right there okay so let me put a little bit of glue so what you're doing is you're just taking away every other strip okay now here is the one on top okay i think i'm gonna let's see yeah i'm gonna go ahead and put that on there Put a little bit on here. Don't need much glue at all. And then I'm gonna glue this last one down here. I'm being a mess with my glue tonight. Do you ever have one of those nights? Stick into everything except the paper. There we go. How cute, how cute. All right, now the wings. All right, let me show you for the, make sure I have my paper here. For the ladybug, you're going to use this stamp from the set. 
and you're going to use the real red. And I know I'm not gonna be using this this evening, but I just wanted to show you how it works. It's really easy to use. You just go ahead and you stamp onto your paper. And then you bring in your punch. And remember, you're gonna to have to hold it this way so you can see what's happening there. Ugh. I've not done that. I'm sure it's a mess because that's so light. The foil is going to stick to every to everything with glue on it. And then I'm just going to slide this in here until I find the right spot in the window. And then I'm just going to punch it out. Now there's also a stamp that you can stamp the polka dots if you want to stamp those in black. So there's all kinds of things you can do, all kinds of versions. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and make the wings for my little bee. Okay, I'm going to be using a piece of vellum. They have, there's vellum available in the Stampin' Up! catalog. It's vellum paper. It's much more sturdy than your regular vellum. It does not curl like a lot of vellums do. And then with my ladybug, I put dimensionals under the wings. Really can't do that with your B because you would see them. So I just put a glue dot underneath. And that really doesn't show very much. So I put a glue dot and then right on there and look at that. Super cute. I love it. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring in our other pieces here. We're almost done. This is a quick, a quick box. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the back of my two inch circle and put that onto my coordinating scallop. Next, now it's time for the dimensionals. And I'm gonna put Two on the back of my bee, and I just remembered my stinger. Oh, how can a bee not have a stinger? All right, gonna put him on there, and I'll show you how simple I used what I did for the stinger. <laughs> really complicated. I just went here to the edge of my black paper, and I made like a really, really skinny, long rectangle. That looks like a stinger. I know what they look like. I've seen them up close for sure. All right, then what I'm going to do is just put a little dot of glue on the end and then slip it right up there underneath his bottom and just touch it to the back of the paper. And there it is. Ooh, that's a long one. Look out for this bee. Okay, everybody see that? All right, let's go ahead and put it on our box. Here's the box. What we have left to do is make our belly band. This is a one inch strip. I believe it is one by, I don't know, one by eight. I'm not sure we're gonna need this much. What did I have here in my directions? Hold on, I think this sounds like it may be a little too long. Mm -hmm. Oh, it says one by eight. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to lay my box right in the center. So I have a, the same, about the same amount of belly band up and behind, behind at the top and behind at the bottom. Then I just kind of fold it around, pinching at each of the corners, bring it up, bring it over, Pinch. All right, now I'm gonna take the box away for just a second. You can see there the places where I pinched. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my bone folder, fold these down, and really give those folds a good press so that they'll be nice and sharp on your treat box. That's the best way to do it. Rather than trying to figure out what to score it at, 
before you put it on. I just never had a lot of success for that because not all boxes are gonna come out the exact same size, even though they start with the same amount of paper. So I always just do that as a trick. All right, now let's go ahead and bring it back on. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to take my Tombow here. Just put a little bit right there on the box, on the belly band, sorry. And then make sure that your ends are even so that you have this totally overlapped. Come on you, there we go. I'm gonna hold it for just a second. You don't want it too tight, you want it to be able to, to slide. You don't want your recipient to not be able to get in there with the good candy. So there is the belly band, very easy, slides on and off. Okay, now, last thing we need to do, we're going to put our glue away and we're gonna hit the box with a couple, three, let's see, say three more dimensionals. Okay, then we're going to take our backings off and put our cute little B right on the front of the box. And there he is. How about that? Is that not the cutest thing ever? I love it. Okay, and there is his little tail that I almost forgot. Now for the ladybug box, I used paper from the pattern party paper stack that has lots of different black and white types. And here I used those black, the black polka dot stamp to fill in those white polka dots. Here I did not. So it really is your choice if you wanna have the dark spots or the light ones. So those are my cute little boxes for this evening. I hope you love them as much as I love making them, creating them. So next week, I wanna share a little bit about next week. We're gonna be using this Ladybug, Hello Ladybug bundle again. But we're gonna be using it, of course, to make a Ladybug, but we're actually gonna be using the wings to make this cute little flower on the front of this little treat bag. You like the bee the best? <laughs> That's the only kind of bee I like, I tell you. When I see them outside, I'm running the other way. But this one, I used the punch, the wings, to create a cute little flower. So this is the little treat bag that we'll be creating next Tuesday. This is a great choice for spring as well. Of course, we're going to use the cute little ladybug here. And of course, it's big enough to hold a couple of delicious eggs here. We got Russell Stover's and a Twix egg. So lots of space in there. This is a quick and easy little bag to make. It's made just out of a piece of designer series paper. And then the handles are um, cardstock. So this will be our project for next week. So come back and join me for at least one more project using the Hello Ladybug Suite. Maybe I um, bundle, maybe I can think of some more. I'm gonna try. All righty, well, thanks for joining me tonight. Remember that the, D, the PDF will be available in just a few minutes on my webs, on my blog and feel free to download it and give it a try. And if you would make any of these cute little boxes, please post it on the VIP page so I can see what you're making. And if you have any trouble finding them, I know Target has them. Of all the places I've been, Target had the cute little um, ladybugs and bee candy. So everyone have a great week. I think it's gonna rain tomorrow, so it might be a great day for crafting. All right, so have a great week. And we will see you again next Tuesday. Take care. Keep stamping. Bye-bye.